Welcome to the eLaborate Topics Podcast, where we focus on lab-specific strategies for medical laboratory professionals. We're proud to be the healthcare detectives that work behind the scenes to get the results needed to influence medical decisions. Let's grow together and jump right into the lab. Hi, friends. Welcome back to another episode of eLaborate Topics. I'm your host for today's show, Stephanie Whitehead. For those of you tuning in for the first time, I'm your podcasting laboratory leader and co-host for Elaborate Topics. Elaborate Topics is a weekly podcast where myself and my co-host, Ms. Taiwana Wilson and Lona Small, bring you topics related to the laboratory and leadership to help you excel inside and outside of the laboratory. And today, we're very excited for today's show because we're going to be talking about how to kick off your laboratory career and the importance of uh, connecting to a professional organization. So today I have joining with me two very special la- fellow laboratory guests, Erin Odegaard and Tiffany Channer. Hello. Hello. How are you, Hi. Stephanie? Good. Thanks for joining me today. Welcome to the show. Um, so before we get into our conversation, I'm going to ask you guys just to tell me a little bit about yourselves and a little bit about your laboratory career and journey. And let's start with Erin. Okay. Uh, So I've been a laboratory professional for probably about 15 years now. Um, I um, initially started out as a music performance major in college, and then I had a micro class that found out about the profession and took a a trip up to see a um, program and just fell in love with it um, and have been in microbiology pretty much ever since I, I found my home. Uh, so I've been a, a bench tech for quite a bit of my career and was a technical specialist at, um, at Mayo Clinic for a little bit and then decided that uh, I wanted to go back to more learn more about pediatric microbiology. So um, I went to Baptist Health and I've been there for a while now. I'm, I'm pretty passionate about education. I uh, got to teach at the University of North Florida at their MLS program. So uh, it's important to be involved and kind of get back. So I'm now lucky to be a part of um, ACP and uh, be on the lab council. Okay. And Tiffany? Well, my history is a little different. <laughs> um, actually, finding about clinical laboratory science was a godsend. Um, I was a biochemistry major at first, and I wanted to make makeup cosmetics for MAC. Yeah, I wanted to do that. And then, you know, after organic chemistry said, I don't think that's going to (laughs) work, things changed, but for the best. Um, After which I went to, I actually went to an informational session that the the clinical lab science program had and um, basically fell in love. I saw my colleagues in lab coats and they were streaking plates and they showed me Giardia under the microscope and it moved and I was sold, you know. Um, learned about the field and I was like, sign me up. Got in the program and I, it, it's just been nothing but God, to be honest, since then. Um, I had the opportunity straight out of Stony Brook University after finishing my undergrad to be an ASCP consultant and go to Swaziland, South Africa, and teach um, medical professionals how to do proper phlebotomy techniques as well as laboratory safety. And um, that then, that experience then propelled me to get my master's in public health because nothing happens without policy. Um, in, during that time, I've been, I was working at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center here in New York, and I worked there for about a decade, after which I went down to Florida for some bit, and I got some experience in terms of management, laboratory management, and I have relocated back to New York, and now I am the Assistant Administrative Lab Director and quality manager at White Plains Hospital. I've been in my role for about six months, but with COVID, it feels like six years. So it's been quite a ride. Very challenging, but I'm up for the challenge. And um, 
it's 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 a great environment. So I definitely know that um, I'll succeed here. Hello. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm back. That's fine. Um, the reason I wanted to talk to both of you for this podcast is because I know you're very much involved in the American Society for Clinical Pathology, the ASCP. Yes, and, yes uh, and both of you are either currently or previously have held a leadership role. So I wanted to ask you guys, when it comes to either the ASCP or other organizations that you're involved in, um, talk about your personal experiences and benefits um, being involved in those organizations and what inspired you to join? All right, I'll go first. With so with me, it all starts from your program. The influence that your program director and your professors have on students is tremendous. So my program at Stony Brook University my program director, Kathy Finnegan, she's a part of ACLS as well as AACP, and she was the one that I actually went down to Swaziland with. I accompanied her, and uh, that's how I got that opportunity, once in a, la- a lifetime. And she is very active. She's on the Board of Governors currently at ASCP, and she would always preach to us the importance of being a part of a professional organization. Apart from all of the opportunities that come in terms of networking, you learn so many different skills. You know, people think, people talk about having soft skills and how important that is within management especially. The way how you ascertain those skills is by being a part of like when you were in high school, a part of clubs. And it's the same thing as you grow grow as an adult. You know, um, so she really stressed that. And um, I said, you know what, I'm going to be an ACP member, and I've been a member since I was a student. Um, after which I'll tell you a really, really interesting story. So in 2011, I went to our annual meeting, and I encourage every single laboratory professional, please invest in yourself and go to an annual meeting you will learn so many nuggets, so so many influential people are in one space. Unfortunately, of course, we're in COVID right now, but it does so much for you. You know, um, some may say, oh, I don't have a professional, I don't have a business card, I'm not a manager or a supervisor. Go on Vista Prince and make a card, you know, so that you can hand out to people and um, put yourself out there. So... In 2011, I went to our annual meeting, and it was held in Las Vegas. And that's where I actually met Taiwana Wilson. And, you know, we had a rapport, and we're talking and whatnot, and I saw on her badge she had, she had like a little tassel on it, and it said um, local representative, AACP local representative. And I was like, oh, what's that? How did you get that? And she told me, oh, I volunteer and you should really go online and look into it. You'd be a great local um, rep. And I said, oh, most definitely. I'm going to look into that. So I went on ACP's website, and um, I joined um, the whole being a volunteer and representing ACP and going to different high schools and um, colleges and basically teaching students about clinical laboratory science. And from a local rep, I became the regional rep, and then I, became, I went on to the CLP, which is the Council of Laboratory Professionals. Um, being on the CLP, it's, it's one in a lifetime. It's, it's a great experience. You will definitely meet people from all over, the, all over the country. And, you know, they have different stories and different walks of life in terms of how they got into the field, and your networking chances just expand. And um, from there, you know, I then applied to the chairship, and I just finished my year, and now Aaron is the the new chair for the CLP, 
And that's how it happened. So I started locally, and I just built my way up. But it all started with, one, Tawana actually telling me about it, and two, me actually going on the website and putting in the effort. So it takes two. You know, you have to go and put yourself out there. And for Aaron, there's uh, – thank you, Tiffany. And for Aaron, there's a difference between being a member of a professional organization and being an active member of a professional organization. So what inspires you to yeah, be no. an active member? There definitely is. That's – um. Uh, that's kind of where I, I, I started out. I, um, so I've been an ACP member since I sat for my boards, and then I signed up and kept renewing my membership and wasn't as involved as I, I could have been at the beginning. Um, and it had worked out that um, when I went through tech school, one of my um, teachers, um, Lynette Shakapak, she um, taught my micro class. And um, 10 years later, when I was teaching micro at the University of North Florida, I asked her to come give a guest lecture. And um, from that, she gave the guest lecture, was exciting the students, and we just were standing around talking about uh, more involvement, more engagement, um, and that was probably around 2016, and um, felt inspired and uh, signed up to be a Southeast um, local representative. Um, and with that, ended up volunteering at career fairs and organizing professionals for meetups and um, also um, kind of advocating for our, our licensure in Florida because we're a licensed state. Um, and just the uh, emailing back and forth with some of the members of AACP um, gave me uh, just more inspiration, more tips, more um, help to kind of um, get some of the things I wanted off the ground. And um, at that point, um, a, my good friend Lynette, um, she said, you know, why don't you look at the Council Laboratory Professionals? And it was definitely one of the best decisions I think, can honestly say I, I, I made in my life. Um, um, with that, it's um, been a, a journey. And um, even when um, the, the program that I um, taught in was being closed down, um, ACP um, gave me resources and support to kind of try to advocate for programs and for education. So um, it's definitely one of those amazing things where you're, you're in the room with so many amazing people that are motivating you and exciting you about just um, becoming a leader or um, just um, helping you mentorship-wise in, in your career. Um, so even with um, ACP and other groups, it's always good if you can get involved in a, a local group. So if you've got like a local um, micro society or um, local lab society, like um, ASCLS has local chapters, it's always good to get involved with them as well. But the great thing about ACP is that uh, they're big on collaboration. So um, the local groups that I'm involved with, I'm working with ACP on getting them resources and on um, different initiatives together. So it's uh, definitely a great place to uh, build those leadership skills and make great connections. Great. That's a great story. And for our listeners out there who may be um, still going through their rotations or um, about to take their board certifications, um, explain exactly what is the CLP. We've kind of referenced it a couple of times, and talk about the CLP as well as other volunteer opportunities available through um, ASCP or other organizations like the AABB. Uh, Tiffany. So the CLP stands for the Council of Laboratory Professionals, and basically we are we're a group of people that sit on this council and we represent laboratory professionals. So in other words, we are your voice. Um, it's, it's an honor to actually have this, have this uh, title and be on, on, on this board and with this council because all of, the, all of the challenges that we face within the laboratory field is brought to the table and then it's moved up the ladder um, to the executive board. So the chair and uh, the, the, the next chair to be actually sit on the executive board and they notify them 
of what's going on in the field. So that's why it's very important to make sure that members actually go online and if they have any questions that they want to propose to the board, that this is an outlet for them to do so. Um, so we're just the council here on the, C on the ASCP. However, for AABB and for, let's say, CLMA, there's so many different organizations within the laboratory that you can join. They have similar structures. So you can basically join and apply to be a part of um, these councils and represent your field. However, in doing so, as you know, there are many other individuals that would love to be on this council as well. Hence, it is very, very, very competitive. So you need to make sure that your resume and your CV is one that really can compete. So when it comes on to volunteer work, we're looking for things like that. We're also looking at education and um, what's your goal, what's your outlook, you know? Um, what, what is that particular challenge that you want to tackle being on the council? So you have to go in with a vision. You know, it's very, very important. Um, but being a, again, being a part of these organizations, they do so much for you in terms of networking. The individuals that I've met, I mean, I've met the president of the uh, American Red Cross, and we have a great, great rapport, and I mean, and it's all through ASCP. Um, but the same goes for ABB and CLMA. So I would tell you to cast your net and um, get out there and be active because, as you know, our field is a field that many do not know about. So be that voice for the field. And I'm sure, you know, just your active roles in um, the professional organizations that you belong to have also had um, a positive impact in your career roles. And so, Erin, I'm going to ask you, what are some of the things that you've been able to accomplish through your volunteer roles that have also helped you in your uh, uh, professional uh, job uh, where you live? Okay. Um, oh, is it right if I touch on a little bit of what Tiffany talked about? Sure. Uh, in the previous question? Um, yeah. Yes. The, so the CLP2, um, I agree with everything Tiffany's saying. It's... Um, it really is the kind of the grassroots of ASCP. We're uh, on the um, out there trying to find out what the members need, what um, education resources are needed. Um, we're kind of the ones that are you get to advocate for change. Um, so one of the what, cool things I learned um, from our last annual meeting was that in um, in 2001. Uh, Prior to 2000, the American Society for Clinical Pathology used to be called the American Society for Clinical Pathologists. And it was the CLP that was the group that really made it the effort to say, okay, you know, we need to have a name that encompasses the entire laboratory. So not only just pathologists, but in our name, it actually talked about all the laboratory professionals. So CLP definitely gives you that, that chance to really uh, impact change, um, advocate for more scholarships. It's this um, great body where you're working with people from all over the country collaborating. Um, and I guess as for uh, my career, um, it's given me great uh, leadership skills. It's um, uh, been giving me a platform to just remind myself how much my voice matters and how much I need to um, speak up. Um, so even in the laboratory, if there's something that, uh, like a process that I know can be done better, um, it, it just rem it's a reminder that, okay, to make things better, to change things, you need to change policy. Um, so uh, it's given me more of a confidence in my, my voice. And then also with um, some of the outreach um, with AACP, I've gotten to do, they've got a program called the Patient Champions Program where um, you get to see how um, patients advocate and thrive and are impacted by the laboratory. So um, I recently just got to work with the Jordan Smolensky Foundation, um, and they're big on a rapid identification of this free-living amoeba called Nicolaria fowleri, which the laboratory is the, the key 
to the patient's survival were the ones that thought it first. So um, just that um, reminder that everything we do is impacting a patient. It's, um, it's something that's made definitely made my practice um, extremely patient-focused. And when I'm doing something or teaching in, in the lab, um, you know, I, I make sure I remind the people that are with me that, you know, we're doing this for this, little, this small child or for our patient that they're here in their time of need. So um, it's definitely given me that, um, reminded me of why we're here and given me the voice to know, okay, um, I, I can impact change. For those people who are listening that may uh, just be using the ASCP as their, uh, their certification body um, and now are inspired to say, okay, I can become a volunteer, I can become a more active member, um, but, you know, it still takes a lot of confidence and motivation to serve as a leader in a professional organization, which both of you guys have done or are doing. So, you know, really what gave you the confidence to go for uh, presidency of, of the CLP and what did you hope to accomplish, and, and what do you hope to accomplish? Let me start with Tiffany. So, you know, <laughs> um, one would say that are you born a leader, or is one born a leader, or is that something that is cultivated, right? So I think it takes a little bit of both. It's not just one that, oh, you were just born this way, it also takes molding. And um, I've been like a student leader since like the ninth grade, right? So throughout all my life, majority of my life, I've been in some sort of leadership position. I've been a monitor or something of the sort. And all of those experiences basically has given me confidence to want to propel myself for more. However, you know, there you have individuals that are late bloomers, right? Everybody does not, let's say, um, mature at the same time, which is fine. However, you have to put in the work. So whether it's big or small, grassroots, you can, you can start now. So becoming a local representative and just working your way up the ladder, trust me, your name and your actions will be noti noticed by many individuals. Um, and that's what started for me. I just started locally, and it sounds like Aaron did the same thing, right, right Aaron? We just yep. worked our way up, you know? And your name will, uh, after a time, your name, people will know, people will know your name and what you've been doing. Um, it's so very important to be involved. I, I can't stress that enough because visibility is an issue and while I had my chairship that was my focus visibility and um, with Aaron we actually went to the ACLS uh, conference down in Florida for um, the educators con conference yeah. click and it was amazing you know it was an opportunity where ACLS members of course, you know, that are within our education had the opportunity to see ASCP at their, at their meeting and being represented, right? So that's so important. Um, the directors yeah, and, of different programs were able to tell me, you know, different vices that they have with ASCP in terms of certain materials that they need and things of that nature, and I was able to um, relay that information to the ASCP staff. So it's all about communication and working together. And you, it doesn't matter how small you may think you are, you can affect change. And the more that we are in numbers, the more powerful we'll be. So I encourage everyone to definitely, you know, try try some volunteer opportunity. You don't have to necessarily, let, let's, say, let's say you're not good with, with children, right? You don't have to go to schools. You can go to colleges, right? Um, or even in your local hospital, speak to your director and tell them, you know, as you know, clinical labs is not really well known. When it comes on to lab week, can I do the table down in the uh, cafeteria this year? 
or maybe suggest an initiative that you would like to see implemented within your institution. You know, um, that also puts you on the radar to the director as well for leadership opportunities. So there's always a way that you can definitely um, utilize your skills. Yeah, no, I would definitely agree with that, Tiffany. Um, I, no voice is too small. It's um, mm. You just have to be willing to speak up and have your opinion heard, and, and people will see your passion. Mm-hmm. And they'll they'll want to help you. They'll see how excited and energized you are. So. Mm-hmm. And we know that um, the slogan for oh, I'm sorry, Erin, go ahead. Oh, that's okay. Uh, so, as far as my motivation for um, wanting to be chair, it's um, or just even be on the, the lab council in general. Um, you have this great opportunity and this great chance to um, impact so many people in our profession and actually. Um, bring some change. So um, you can, in my case, I want to have more member engagement, so um, an advocate for more educational programs and um, just get more collaborations going. So um, like Tiffany was talking about earlier, we went down to um, Orlando for the Lab Educator Conference, and um, it, there were educators from all over the country. There were probably about 600, so we were able to um, speak to them, find out what their concerns were, um, just brainstorm a little bit. And um, it was great watching um, Tiffany just kind of work the tables at some of the networking bubbles um, in her career ambassador jacket, um, mm-hmm. uh, talking to everyone. And just um, it, You do feel very empowered, which is a great thing. Um, but I do hope we've got a lot of, this year on the council, we've got a lot of great things planned to kind of engage members a little more. Um, the educator conference went so well last year, we're actually going to be back there again. So if you're a lab educator and uh, you see um, any of us there, um, come up, start the conversations. Um, and one cool thing we're going to start doing is trying to have virtual round tables. That way uh, we'll bring different initiatives and things to members so that way over Zoom, I guess the great thing, the one silver lining with this the marathon of a pandemic is that um, we're doing more things digitally, so it's giving more access to people. So um, we're hoping to get some roundtables going so that way we can um, connect with our, all of you guys out there. And um, if you have struggles or ideas, um, you'll be able to kind of talk to Tiffany and I and some of the other council members and um, share your ideas, and you never know where they'll lead. So um, it's going to be Exciting as always, right, Tiffany? Oh, it's always a great time. Yep. So I'm glad that you brought up the COVID-19 because we kind of have experienced this year that uh, the lab, the ASCP slogan, Stronger Together, is definitely true, especially going through this COVID-19 um, pandemic and the way that professional organizations, CAP, ASCP, other organizations have been able to advocate for the laboratory having the resources we needed through this pandemic. So in terms of um, advocacy and looking from the perspective of of being an advocate for the laboratory profession, how have you seen a benefit of being a part of ASCP or other organizations um, flourish in your experience? Well, as for me, like I said, (laughs) my start date in my new role was April 6th, <laughs> right? So that well, that's, a, that's a nice time to start. And you started oh, yeah. in New York in April. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, perfect time. <laughs> perfect yeah. time. So that was at the I will height. say the governor of New York did an amazing job in April, though. I will say, I'll give you guys oh, kudos for the is, governor. That is fact. That is fact. Mm-hmm. One yeah. thing. Governor Cuomo does not play. <laughs> so, I mean, it uh, it definitely impacted us. I mean, we also have clients um, within nursing homes, so that was a different feat, right? Because, you know, we have our phlebotomists that are going in to draw, and they have to get swabbed like twice a week and all of that. So oh, that, that came on later. <laughs> but um, prior to... 
um, I have to give all the props to my director. You know, she made sure that the ID nows um, were validated and they started using them and we did in-house testing on like April 4th, right? So that really, really helped in terms of, you know, us preventing us from sending out all of our COVID testing out. So that, that, that really helped us. Um, there were many sleepless nights for her, <laughs> you know, and the laboratory team getting this done. But as you said before, you know, we're stronger together and we worked as a team. And um, we have that as a platform and as well as the Cepheid. So, um, you know, we made sure to execute that. So I was very happy about that. However, during that time, as you know, the rest of the lab continues to go, right? And um, we were also in our whole cap window. All of this is going on at the same time, all of it, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, um, uh, um, yeah, you got to breathe. We, <laughs> you have to breathe. Yeah, we locked up, they rescheduled, so we got a little more time. But, yeah, that's you had yeah, a lot of fun. So, yeah, they rescheduled <laughs> for us as well. And um, but they came, <laughs> so we had ours about two two weeks ago, and thank God we successfully passed our cap inspection. Very very proud of my laboratory team. So congratulations um, with COVID and all of that, and AABB and all of that. Yes. So I'm telling you, this six months feels like six years. <laughs> However, like you said before stronger together, and um, you have to call people, people that you know within your network. When your network is strong and you have a question, something that you've never seen before, or how you're handling it over in another area, you have to converse, right? You have to make sure that you're sharing information. So, again, I reached out to my network. My network, luckily, is pretty large, and there are people in high places. So we were able to utilize, you know, some of that information and, um, you know, execute. So with COVID, I made sure to do the same, you know, for my colleagues. They would call me and say, hey, how, what about the swabs? What did you use? You know, and I'd give them tips and, oh, look out for this and look out for that. So you have to work as a collaborative. And that's what we have to do within the laboratory field because I'm telling you, we feel it now, but it's coming down to you, <laughs> right? So I will say that, you know, being a part of the listers, emails, yeah. groups, I mean, the supply chain oh. in the early spring was so crazy. I don't know how any laboratory survived without partnering with somebody and asking questions or where are you getting your swabs? Where are you finding this? Where are you finding that? Yeah. Um, because yeah. the supply chain was so iffy. Uh, you yeah. had to kind of lean on your, your partners in different states you know, around the country to yeah. figure out, you know, what the heck was going on. What was you doing? Right, right. And, you know, yeah, like you say, you say, you say that as well, lovely supply chain, and every single, there was a time that I'd come in and my director is on the phone and it's about swabs. That, that's all it was about, <laughs> swabs and how many you have and how are we going to get them, nasal pharyngeal versus nasal swab. Oh, my gosh. We even thought about 3D printing. We listen. Yeah. We tried it all. There were 3D printing, and there were people who were trying to validate. And people were like, "Oh no, they hurt. I can't do that." <laughs> listen, we tried it all. We tried it all. She was always on the phone, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But one thing that I really, really, really commend ACP for is having those town halls, right? So those different town halls that. Um, occurred in, in, um, during, more so during the height of COVID. ACP had different topics, and I think that was tremendous. You know, you had different panelists, people on the panel, and um, Dr. Holliday would ask questions, and you would get a little insight on what's going on throughout the country, which was really influential. Yeah, so I was true. really those grateful were, for that. Those were great, just um, even just giving ideas on, uh, how people are handling workflows, um, mm -hmm. convalescent plasma, different treatments, um, mm -hmm. just to hear what, was go what other colleagues were doing um, definitely did help. So, yeah, those town halls were great. 
Yeah. And I'm not sure if everybody knows, but the BOC, there was a, but I think, no, it's it's not time yet. The deadline's not yet. I think the deadline is October 31st. So the BOC actually has um, an award that they're um, giving towards um, COVID laboratory heroes. Yeah, I think that's the title. Um, I definitely tell people to go check that out. And there are definitely COVID heroes out there. Um, and we have to make sure that these people are highlighted because there have been many sleepless nights. <laughs> okay. Many. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm glad you mentioned that because one of the uh, one of the things, especially in our profession, being so behind the scenes, um, is for laboratory professionals to continue to stay motivated and inspired in their career. Um, sometimes you can feel like the recognition is just not there. Um, and so I'm going to ask you, Erin, how has being a part of a professional organization helped you stay motivated and inspired as a laboratory professional? Um. If as a laboratory professional, it, um, it it just reminds me of everything that that we're doing and what we're trying to do. Um, it uh, the professional organizations give what we do um, visibility, um, and it gives you a chance to impact a change in our profession, um, impact policy, things, uh, get initiatives going. Um, so when I'm even just when I'm on the bench, um, I'll be thinking about a culture or a program that I can use even with um, some of the stuff that ASCPAT has with different resources that I can um, bring into the lab. Um, I guess it just reminds me um, that as lab professionals, we all have voices um, that you need to, to speak up and speak out about uh, different things in the lab or if you have ideas for change. Um, it, it just... Um, the professional members have just reminded me just of how important our voices are, and, um, and I keep that with me um, when I'm doing my day-to-day. Because -day. Um, so, it, it's easy to get um, complacent. You can easily just start, you know, come in, come out, and not realize why you're there. Um, but it definitely, the work I've gotten to do with ACP reminds me of why I'm there, and um, definitely makes me strive to work a little harder or, or, or just, do that much better for the patients that we're impacting. Thank you. I like that. I like that it, it helps you to kind of refocus back on the patient and remember that every two there's a specimen is uh, somebody waiting on a result yeah, and somebody waiting on the news that's going to impact their life. So, yeah. guys, it, great conversation. Oh, go ahead, Aaron. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, it's just, um, I mean, they're there in their time of need, and you're the one giving them the answer, so. It's um, True. what you do matters. Yep. I always tell my staff nobody comes to the hospital because they like the air conditioning. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> or for the meal. You don't come for the meal either. <laughs> you don't come for the cafeteria. You know, <laughs> you're here because you, no, you've got, you know, not no key. other choice but to be here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, it's on us to make sure that you get the best care and the most expeditious care possible. Um, so as we wrap up this wonderful conversation, I always love to ask my guests what advice they would leave for our listeners um, to use in their professional lives to strengthen what they're already doing, to move them forward, something like an action item, a resource they can go look at, um, something they can read, maybe a website recommendation. And so uh, what do each of you use in your personal lives, um, you know, as motivation or inspiration or as mentorship guidance? Um, as you're going through um, your days. And so, Tiffany, we'll start with you. So, you know, many individuals say to me, oh, but Tiffany, you know, you're lucky, you're in an organization, or you have a director that's willing to listen to you, and I don't have that, so I don't know what to do. Right? <laughs> so you make your change, right? You have to be the person that, make sure that your influence is actually heard and there's something that's actually done about it. So you can't leave everything up to someone else to actually do the work for you. You have to put in the work. So I would say one thing, 
you have to start locally, right? So if you can't necessarily, you don't necessarily see change within your organization, that's when all these different professional organizations come in handy. So there's always an initiative, there's always a project for you to be a part of, and that gives you inspiration. I'm telling you, me being a blood banker, there were many nights (laughs) I go home and I'm drained. I am tired because I had a bleeder, right? And after a while, you know, you, oh, it's the same humdrum of every day and, you know, you kind of get a little complacent and you say to yourself, you know, I need some inspiration. When I go out to the school and I'm presenting um, as a career ambassador for ASCP at a high school, I'm telling you, these children, they give you motivation just to see the light in their eyes and to see that you are imparting information that they would never known before. It means so much. Me as well, being an African-American woman in a lab coat sends so much the message of representation to um, groups that are underrepresented. So you have so much power, and you have to make sure that you utilize that power. Now, in terms of what do, where can I refer you to, you know what I can refer to you to? This podcast. And this is so true. So I love oh my God. podcasts, right? I really do love podcasts. And I listen to them all the time. <laughs> Even though, luckily right now, my commute's about a half hour each way, lucky me, <laughs> I still listen to podcasts. And um, one, one session that uh, Elaborate Topics had was on inspections, Right. And I think I even called Stephanie and said, this was really good. This was good. (laughs) You know, you guys really embarked some really good (laughs) messages here, right? And um, I'm actually going to be going on my first inspection on Thursday. Can you imagine? telling you, this six months that I've been here, I've done so much, (laughs) right? So um, I'll, I'll be definitely, you know, taking some of those tidbits that I learned um, off of the podcast. But, yes, you know, be current with the times. Listen to podcasts that are towards the field, Um, town halls. On ASCP's website, there is so much information. I think of those lab magazines, those lab medicine magazines that I get monthly um, and those wonderful articles. You have colleagues out there that are going above and beyond. If you read something and you are inspired, get the contact information of that person. You never know how life is. You may be able to work with that person one day. You know, so I would say don't limit yourself. You know, make sure that your ambition and your your goals are so high that it always gives you something to propel yourself to push towards. Um, I know that there are times that you become complacent and you're like, you know, I just want to chill, right? And that's fine. But also keep in mind, I got a five-year goal. How long am I going to chill for? (laughs) Right? So I always say, I always say, you need to put in the work now because five or ten years from now, you may not be able to do so, right? So if you're young and you have opportunity and you have time, you don't have, let's say, a family or um, someone who's ill within your family that has issues that you're taking care of, utilize this time to get more education, get more certifications. Listen, do as much as you can in your younger years so that when you become older, you can really chill. You understand what I'm saying? So you have to make sure that you put that work in, and that's what I'm going to leave you, leave you with. That's good. Thank you for the shout-out. I, I think what's so funny about that uh, particular podcast that you mentioned about the inspection is, you know, it, it's like many other things in the laboratory. It's, it's um, tidbits and tips and um topic that we had amongst the three of us and we were like you know maybe we should just share this Mm -hmm. um and we got so much feedback with how many people were like this was good information and we were like 
<laughs> so I think we do that so much. We just kind of think so many things are natural or common or normal, um, and we forget that, you know, um, best practice is called best practice for a reason, and we should yes. share with one another and make sure that we're helping one another, even if it seems like uh, it's nothing to us. So, Aaron, I'm going to ask the same question to you. What advice would you have for the listeners? Okay, I'd say um, just stay open to new opportunities. Um, don't, you know, be afraid to say yes. Um, sometimes you have to be brave and take risks, and um, uh, you never know where th- where things will lead you um, just by a simple conversation. I um, uh, recently had an old colleague who had the idea of wanting to start a journal club, so she sent me a, a text, and from that, that led to a meeting, and that meeting has led to us trying to get a local journal club going or a local group that's going to meet the needs of so many people. So it's uh, you just you never know who you're going to run into. So. Um, don't be afraid to have that conversation um, and share your ideas. Um, as far as apps, um, I'd probably say um, I'm a big proponent of mental health, so um, Headspace and Simple mm-hmm. Habit are, are very nice. They you just um, like little short meditations. I'll um, just do like a little breathing thing in the morning five minutes before I go in, and it's very nice and just refreshing. Sometimes I'll color it's just these little things you have to make sure you do some kind of Mm self-care so that way you've got all this energy and um, excitement to go into the field and change things. Um, Mm -hmm. And then one great thing AACP started up is they have a mentorship program. So if you're somewhere where there really isn't a mentor that you, that you need at that point in your career around you, or if everyone's too busy, um, AACP has got all these great mentors online that you can correspond with or ask about um, what you should do with your career or education. Um, uh, one of my mentees uh, wanted to get back into micro after being out of the field for a minute. So we went through study resources. We talked about resume building, and um, she got her, her job in micro up in Chicago, and I, we still go back and forth with if she's got a question on cultures or something, or she's like, oh, I see people doing it this way, but uh, what are your thoughts? So there's still that back and forth. So the ACP mentorship program is great, but um, yeah, don't don't be afraid to speak up. You are um, one of a kind, and your voice is something that could change a lot of things. So that one idea you have, write it down. Don't be afraid to um, email someone associated with the podcast or with um, things on social media because you you do you never know who you're going to meet and. Um, where they could take you or where you, that interaction could lead you on your career. So be bold and be brave. Definitely. That's awesome. I like that. Can you guys also tell the listeners how they could reach out to you after this uh, podcast in case somebody has uh, additional questions or just wants to connect with you guys and get to know a little bit more about what we've talked about? So the best way to reach me would be on LinkedIn. Um, I live on LinkedIn. Um, it's a great professional resource, and um, there are many people that have li- reached out to me that way, and um, I've collaborated with many people that way as well. So the best best bet for you is to reach out to me on LinkedIn, and I'm also on Facebook. So, and I, it's my name, Tiffany Channer. So that's how I can be reached. Aaron. Um, Oh, and Tiffany, didn't you learn about your job opportunity through LinkedIn, or weren't you contacted? So? Oh, yes. You know, well, yes, in a sense, in a sense, way, in a way, yes. Yeah. You know, the recruiter that actually reached out to me, and the thing is, for this position, I was not looking for a job at the time. And um, she had emailed me this position at the time when I was in Florida, like a year and a half prior, Right? But like I said, I was in Florida, so I paid it no attention. So she even tried then, and then here comes a year and a year, a year and a half later, and she tried me again. Um, but she actually emailed me this time. But um, yeah, and here I am. So link, LinkedIn is excellent. <laughs> yeah, I, you send someone a Tiffany's message. Tiffany's a champion of LinkedIn, so yeah. I didn't want to waste the opportunity to. Um, show the power of what being on LinkedIn can do. Um, oh, yeah, that's uh, true. So as, as for me reaching out to me, um, I'm on um, 
Twitter at um, od o d i e um, zero two two two. Um, I do a lot of micro and infectious disease case studies, um, so you can reach out to me that way. I, I'm on LinkedIn because of Tiffany, um, <laughs> and I made a lot of connections. Um, and then if listeners want to reach out to uh, the CLP uh, with any ideas they have on initiatives or things, uh, we actually have an email address. So it's CLP, uh, C-H-A-I-R, mm-hmm. at AACP.org. So CLP chair at AACP.org. Um, and you, you have, your idea could go anywhere. So we're here to help you. And I will tell you, when you send an email, the staff member that um, actually is in charge of that email address, she reaches out to us immediately. <laughs> so it's not that your voice is not being heard. I'm telling you that for sure. <laughs> Well, thank you, guys. I am also um, a, a stronger force on LinkedIn because of Tiffany. And so when, I, when I connected with her on LinkedIn, I was like, I am clearly not doing enough on LinkedIn. Uh, <laughs> You're LinkedIn not the only one. I said, yeah, she's very inspiring <laughs> and yeah, always doing something. She sets the bar for LinkedIn activity. <laughs> uh, you are a force of nature, Tiffany. It's a, <laughs> Thank you for, you it's are a pleasure to know you. <laughs> yeah. my, my LinkedIn goals was Tiffany. <laughs> that, that's to a be very honest, I don't goal. think I'm that good. <laughs> Taiwana is on a different level. <laughs> Okay, yeah, hashtag, social, <laughs> hashtag social media goals. Yes, right. <laughs> yep. right. Um But uh, thank you guys so much for being my special guest for today's show as we talked about the importance of joining a professional organization. And thank you to the listeners out there for tuning in today. If you like what you heard and you want to listen to some of our previous shows, we've mentioned one already. You can subscribe to directimpactbroadcasting.com or send us an email at elaboratetopics, that's E-L-A-B-O-R-A-T-E-T-O-P-I-C-S, at directimpactbroadcasting.com. And we'll, uh, just like the CLP chair, we will take your topics, or if you'd like to be a guest on the show, uh, we'll reach out to you so you can come on and share your interesting laboratory information with all of our listeners. You can follow me at Stephanie Whitehead at Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Now I have a, I have a good LinkedIn. Now we talked <laughs> about that. <laughs> uh, and please tune in to our next show and hear what uh, we have for you uh, next week, another amazing episode of Elaborate Topics. And until then, thank you and have a great day. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Elaborate Topics where your hosts discussed relevant strategies for laboratory professionals. Please subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and listen to us on directimpactbroadcasting.com. Stay tuned for another episode with information you can use to excel in your laboratory career.